When was the last time you thought about the importance of a preamplifier for a hi-fi system sound quality? Maybe never. If you've been an integrated amplifier user, you've probably taken it for granted because they are built in. But even if you have thought about it, when was the last time you thought about the importance of the type of preamplifier that it is? I'm sure you've given lots of thought to the difference between a solid state and a tube preamplifier. But what about the difference between active and passive? Now, not speakers, active and passive preamplification. I will be honest, it's not something that I've ever really given much thought to before, but I now know that I've been living with my head in the sand for all of these years without even knowing. About a year ago, I was approached by the Bespoke Audio Company, who are a UK-based hi-fi manufacturer, and they asked me if I would be interested to review their preamplifier, which is called Preamplifier, because it's the only hi-fi product that they make. And they described it to me as a passive preamplifier that has no sound of its own. And I had no idea what a passive preamplifier was. And I thought, how the hell am I going to review a product that has no sound of its own? How do I explain that to you? But I Googled the name and instantly fell in love. What a stunning looking piece of hi-fi that has some really nice touches of class and quality. And this preamplifier is made bespoke to the owner's taste. So the idea of crafting my own hi-fi product had massive appeal to me. But that is getting ahead of ourselves. I think initially we need to look at what a passive preamplifier is and is it any good? Does it sound good? And the whole idea and concept of a passive preamplifier is definitely not new. I'm sure there'll be lots of audio files that watch this video that maybe have owned one, but there'll definitely be at least 10 times as many more that would have never owned one because they are definitely not common. And I wonder why they're not common. I assume they must be very difficult to manufacture and therefore expensive. So what is the difference? Well, a normal preamplifier that we all know, we get a box, we plug it into the mains, and then with inside the preamplifier, there will be some kind of circuit that maybe uses solid state devices or maybe tubes that either boosts or amplifies the analog signal that's come into it, maybe from a DAC or from a phono stage. So it will boost that signal or maybe reduce that signal in order to control the amplifier's volume. Now, a passive preamplifier has absolutely no electrical mains power coming to it at all. And in the case of the bespoke audio preamplifier, when you take the lid off, you can see there are no circuit boards, just two transformers, lots of wires and connections. So on the face of it, this passive preamplifier looks a very simple device, but it can't be because I think we would see a lot more of them on the market. And on the company's website, there are some very interesting stats, such as the preamplifier using 442 components, 1.6 kilometers of winding wire, 55 meters of hookup wire, and 200 grams of beeswax. And I haven't quite worked out what the beeswax is for. I'm guessing maybe for uh, stopping your lips getting sore. And I also haven't fully comprehended how this preamplifier actually works. <laughs> I still haven't quite worked it out. I don't think that's necessarily that important for me. But there is one thing to stress and, and point out is that there is a socket on the back for taking a 12 volt signal. But that is for controlling a mechanical mechanism that controls the volume from the remote control. So there is a power supply included, but that power supply and that whole power circuit does not see the audio signal. It's literally just for powering the remote control mechanism. Hi-Fi reviewers can often be criticized for waxing lyrical about amazing Hi-Fi 
products, and I always try my best not to do that. I try my best to just be as honest and as accurate as possible about the sound of a hi-fi product. So for complete honesty, when I first installed the bespoke audio preamplifier into my system, the sound of my system sounded softer than I was expecting it to be, and I really wasn't sure if I liked it. But what I soon realized was that I just needed to turn the volume up more than I thought that I would in order for me to achieve the same perception of musical impact and intensity. And I think that's the first thing to talk about here that is different. The volume control is individual clicks as you turn it. And they're, they're tiny, they're tiny little clicks. There's actually 47 different points of volume control. And 47 doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, between say 12 o'clock and one o'clock, you've got maybe six or seven points. So what I'm trying to get at, there's a lot of control, lots of volume control here, even with this different type of mechanism. So that's definitely not a trade-off of using this passive preamplifier. And actually the knob feel, especially on the input selector, it's really solid and there's a really nice clunk between each input selector and the resistance of the volume control. It's not nearly as heavy as the input selector, but it's just nice. So yeah, big thumbs up for a very satisfying knob feel. Coming back to the sound, with the volume up a bit more, it didn't take me long to realize something very important. With hi-fi system sound quality, we are often focusing on more is better, more detail, more dynamics, more resolution, all being indicators of better sound. But how often do we think of less as being better? Not very often. Well, here is the waxing lyrical part of this review. Listening to music with the bespoke passive preamplifier in my system, Something that slapped me in the face straight away as less being much more was listening to digital music. Normally when I listen to digital music, there is just some tension in it. There's always a bit of edge hardness and some tension. And that can be really dramatic or maybe less dramatic depending on the components of the hi-fi system. But it's always there with digital music, but not with this preamplifier. That digital tension and that edge, that digital edginess was completely gone for all music, regardless of the source. So I could be streaming music from Tidal, I could be listening to music that's ripped from a CD and stored on an SSD. There was no digital edginess or hardness or tension at all. It was completely gone. And this was a real shocker to me because this digital tension, I'm so used to hearing it in digital music that I kind of expect it to be there. And it, I think part forms part of the excitement of listening to digital. And I think the other part of it, we just tolerate it. But for me, it's just there. But <laughs> with this preamplifier, it's completely gone, completely gone. So music sounds really smooth, really relaxed, really organic. And dare I say it, very analog-like. I hate using that analogy, but that's perfect to describe the difference of what this passive preamplifier does to the sound of music and to the sound of a hi-fi system. And I can give you a great example where I noticed this. If you think of anything from Adele, but especially Rolling in the Deep from the number 21 album, there's so much tension in that song. It can be like teeth shattering at times with certain systems. But listening to Rolling in the Deep with the passive preamplifier in my system, yes, there's energy there. There's that energy to the music, but the tension, the tension of it that makes it like that, makes you want to, you know, screw your face up was completely gone. So the Bespoke preamplifier is definitely a Sade. It's a smooth operator. And this was especially impressive as I wasn't hearing any obvious trade-offs. The soundstage was still excellent, very three-dimensional and holographic, which is a huge strength of the Audio Physics Spark speakers that I am reviewing as well. And I think the depth perception of that soundstage was noticeably better than I was getting from the Macintosh MA9500 integrated amplifier with the exact same setup, obviously besides the M23 NAD amplifier that I'm having to use here. And there was better resolution of the subtle details in music too. The decays, the trails, the small things that make you go, wow, I haven't heard it presented like that before. And all of this was just super easy on the ear because there was this wonderful sense of smoothness and grace. So that meant that I could listen even louder than I usually do with no listening fatigue. And even listening to Adele 
With all that usual tension, I could listen to Adele really loud with no listening fatigue. So that was a really <laughs> very impressive start. But I wanted to test this out. Of course, I needed to test this just to make sure, you know, it just wasn't a trick of my mind. So I thought of a really simple test. If the bespoke preamplifier is not supposed to have any sound of its own, what would happen if we took it out of the system? And I used the Chord Electronics Hugo TT2 DAC, which is my reference DAC, as a DAC and a preamplifier. Surely if this preamplifier has no sound, what would happen if we took it out of the system? What kind of change would we hear? And this was really, really interesting. So using the Chord Hugo TT2 as the DAC and the preamplifier, straight away I could hear the sound of my hi-fi system had more solidity, it had more authority, it had more, more security. So everything was a bit bolder and stronger, and maybe a bit more solid. The bass was definitely more full. And because of all of these things, vocals had more solidity in the center of the soundstage and they just felt more secure. All of these things are definitely preferred. But one thing I definitely didn't prefer about the sound was the soundstage. It had gone from being very expansive sounding, really quite three-dimensional and holographic to being more two-dimensional. Two-dimensional from the speakers coming towards me rather than feeling very expansive. And this wouldn't really have mattered too much if all I was listening to was modern music. But as soon as I put on something like, I think it's the Tingval Trio, the song called Beats, which has a huge piano over on the right-hand side. Listening to that with the Chord TT2 as the DAC and preamplifier, the edges of the notes of that piano were very specific, very kind of focused and specific. When I put the passive preamplifier back in, those edges softened and the whole perception, the whole image of that piano became more rounded, became more, more three-dimensional. And even though the edges were softer, they were still there. The information was still there. It was just being presented in a, in a more relaxed, more graceful, more organic kind of way. And whether you would see that as better or worse sound would be up to you. But for me, it was, it was definitely more pleasing. And for me, I think more authentic. So this was a, a really interesting test because it showed to me that the bespoke passive preamplifier is definitely doing something but whether it's got a sound or not is, is really quite different. So what I found myself was in a position where I liked different aspects of both of the presentations. I like the security and solid and boldness of the TT2 as the DAC and Pre, but I was really missing the expansiveness of the soundstage. And once you've heard that smooth, relaxed, tensions-free digital sound, well then, of course, you're going to miss that when that's gone. So I wanted to find a way of getting the best of both worlds. So what I did or tried was put in the chord TT2 into its pre-amplifier mode, but also its high gain mode for outputting the highest voltage. And that feeding through the bespoke passive preamplifier set like that gave me a sound with more, more of that solidity and that fullness and that impact and that liveliness and the solidity that I was missing. But what I found was if I went too high with the Chord TT2 volume, that digital hardness would start to come into the sound. But what I found was if I took the volume too low on the TT2, that solidity would start to go away too. So I found a nice compromise of the volume of the TT2 with a volume range on the passive preamplifier, and then, wow, voila, best of both worlds. And wow, this was a really impressive sound because I was getting a very expansive, very solid and secure sound with fantastic bass solidity, fantastic vocal organic character I listened to some and Besson, uh you know the cliche, cliche hi-fi album the vocal was absolutely fantastic so the important takeaway from this for me was that the fact that there's no active circuitry going on here with the passive preamplifier the fact we're not plugging it in does not mean that it takes away anything from the music in fact <laughs> the bespoke preamplifier seems to enhance the music in <laughs> ways of musicality, enhanced musicality. And I think that would be, will be priceless for many audiophiles and many audiophiles systems. But <laughs> this is definitely not priceless. There is a price here that we'll get to shortly. But what about maybe negatives or trade-offs? Well, interestingly, I think given what happened with me with the Chord TT2 testing, it made me think that 
the, the signal coming into the passive preamplifier is probably more important with a preamplifier like this. But in saying that, I listened to my exact same vinyl setup, turntable setup, and that sounded fantastic. And interestingly, I've never heard my digital front end sound smoother or more organic. But one definite trade-off with a product like this is that there is no sound tailoring options. There's no tone controls. There's no balance controls. There's no mute button if you want to mute it. There's no equalization like there is with the Macintosh you know, amplifier that I've just reviewed. So the, the bespoke passive preamplifier is definitely a more raw type of hi-fi product, or maybe it's just more of a, a purist type of hi-fi product, which will probably appeal to a whole subset of audio files just off that fact alone. And of course, where there is a will, there is a way. If you wanted to mute you know, your input because you want to do something like clean your stylus of your turntable, all you need to do is change the input to one that's not being used, and of course, you mute the sound. So now we need to talk about the bespoke aspect of the preamplifier. The bespoke audio company, with a clue being in the name, will custom hand make to order every single product in-house. And they are sold in some retailers here in the UK, but for the rest of the world, it's a direct sale from the manufacturer to the customer. So they will deal direct with you for home trials and demos as well. And on the website, they have a configurator page that allows you to choose what case color you want, what color trims you want, what top plate you want, and you can go even more custom than the options that are on the website. And that includes what you want written for your input indicators, whether you want numbers or names or maybe Roman numerals, and how many inputs and outputs that you want, how many balanced and how many single-ended RCA. And you can also choose if you want the preamp made with all copper or all silver wiring. The unit I have here is wired with all silver. So what you are getting here is definitely something that is special, special to you as an individual because, of course, you have your own thumbprint on its on its look, you know, on its design and on how I suppose it's going to interact and everything for you. And there is, of course, something pretty special and unique about that because it's very, very rare, of course, for the hi-fi industry. But one thing we haven't spoke about yet, and that is price. So the price will depend, of course, on what configuration you have, but the range is from about £12,000 to about £18,000, and neither of those prices include VAT. So this is a very expensive preamplifier. But I see this as, of course, if you're fortunate enough to be able to afford something like this, as a one-off life purchase. Because of the custom aspect of it because of the nature of its design for me this type of preamplifier is what i would call a, a core hi-fi system component like it would sit at the center of your hi-fi system and you would build the system around it because the way it allows you to hear the source and of course the amplifiers that you're going to use then become very very important and all of these things but because of that custom aspect and because of the quality and i suppose the signal purity this is definitely a you know, a core hi-fi product, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. I would love to be in a position to be able to have one custom made for myself. Unfortunately, I'm not, but I will hang on to this one for as long as possible. So I hope you've found this review useful and helpful. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. If you enjoy my take on hi-fi reviewing in general, please hit that subscribe button. That's probably down here or maybe down here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.